next week we have our session on hr related laws in nigeria and i've done a review of about 12 or 13 of such laws so we're going to be talking so that we see where all those things connect because when you talk about employee relations it's also an, a way of also taking your organization away from litigation if you know how to do it very well so let's start with us um and they say additional strategic employee relations what's your take what's your understanding Good morning, everyone. My what I think it is is that you have to pinpoint a particular, you know, aspect of employee engagement, not generalizing it. You really need to know what to do and what not to do at for a particular, you know, um section or a particular thing not generalizing that's basically that's what i think all right thank you like we always do i tell you there's no wrong response here it's just that when it's time to take the class our facilitator will give right perspective to everything we talk about thank you very much for that additional it could be one Sorry if I pronounced it wrongly, just forgive me. But you know I'm talking about you. What's your understanding about em strategic employee relations? It could be why, Jen. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Um, I would say I don't have much idea on the strategic employee relations. We can't hear you. Not so much familiar with some courses here, I said earlier. That okay. To this. Yes. Okay. okay, so you are not so familiar and you did not study. You see, for those of us who are Christians, our Bible taught us that whatever you don't know about, it says study to show yourself approved. So one of the things you show you are a professional is whatever I do not know about. I always tell people, just give me 15 minutes before you call me up. Give me 15 minutes and let me have access to the internet. I can quickly brush up and gain insight into some, some things and you realize that those things are part of your daily, your everyday experience. You just don't know them yet. And someone will help you put them into perspective. Thank you for that. Um, Lizzie, can you talk? Lizzie. Lizzie. Um, Rukayat Taiwo, strategic employee relations. Rukayat Taiwo, can you hear me, please? Rukayat Taiwo, okay. Um, Ayo, Mr. Ayo, can you hear me? I can see you are listening. Why? Okay, I want to assume that there's a bit of net tech network glitch here. Ogolu Abalogun, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please go ahead. Strategic employee relations. Okay. Um, employee relations talks about the relationship between an organization or an employer and their employees. Well, it basically talks about the efforts or ways employee, employers try to maintain a positive or good or cordial relationship with their employees. And in a way, if there's no good relationship, it would affect productivity and um, performance in a way. And employee relationship goes in two ways. If there's a good relationship or a good mode of communication between their employers and employees, it should make the employees trust their employers that they will fulfill their promises. Because most times 
issues that come up is wage, pay, payday, leave issues and stuff like that. So if the employers are communicating well with their employees, it will give them a form, it, it builds a level of trust between them that they are sure that when their employers say something, they will do it. And for the employee in the other, on the other hand, it also shows that when they do what they are supposed to do or when they make promises and they fulfill it, it will in a way make work go effectively well because employee relationship in a way shows that the um, organization is interested in the employers, in the employees rather, that they know what they want. Both parties know what they want. And in this way, it will ensure that work goes easily. And it will also ensure a, a workplace that is very conducive for everyone to work. So, and there are different reasons or ways that employers, they encourage a good um, employee, employee relations that it shows that they are loyal to them. And once, once there's a good communication, the the organization will be people oriented that they want their um, employees to be to develop and to grow like we always say like we have been taught in um, our classes so it shows that the organization is transparent is honest in their in their way and that they they are straightforward that whenever they say something in the way they are going to um, make it true. Thank you. That's what I love to say, sir. That is interesting. Um, Ogolua will be a good professor. And it's always good to... And um, it's, it's good that we always have, at least some of us, who, despite our tight schedules, still take time to go through this. And what it does for us is it helps our facilitators like I said to you, it's a coaching program, right? It's not a lecturing program. And it's a coaching program so that as the facilitator is talking, you are able to grasp practical um, tools and skills on how to solve real-life problems. And we're sure that at the end of today, you surely have a wonderful time. Who was over? Here today, Obadara, Strategic Employee Relations. Yes, Badara, can you hear me? Okay. You ten Yavala. You ten Yavala, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Your understanding of, of um, strategic employee relations. Okay. Um basically from from the handouts, um from the handout, well. What I was able to learn is that uh, the strategic employer relations is the formulations of uh, formulation and implementation of plans designed to meet the main the needs of a business for harmonious and productive relationship between the employer and the employees. And then um, from the part of the employer, it's a case where they provide. Uh, a psychologically safe environment for employees to be able to thrive and for the part of the employees is a case where they are able to um, carry out their duties according to their contractual agreements and uh, we looked at we looked at the processes of uh, I don't know if I meant to say this but we looked at, like how do I also went down to look at the processes. In the processes, we talked about managing and maintaining great employee relationship, taking into account implications of psychological contracts, which um, which I spoken about, and then the the employer on his own part keeping to um, the job contract terms and conditions, and then the basis of it. There are uh, the basis is to basically promote how how best management and employees should relate in an, in an organization and what can be done to make work a better, can make, uh, to make organizations better. 
And then uh, there were two viewpoints of that, which is uh, the unitary viewpoint and the social partnership. Sorry, unity, um, the unitary viewpoint and the pluralist viewpoint, which we had earlier spoken about in one of our classes. In the unitary viewpoint, the belief was that the management and management and employees share the same concern and must cooperate to achieve the objectives of the company. And um, it was also given, we also looked at uh, um, an addition from Walter in 1985, which stated about the principle of mutuality, which is about social partnership, which is another example of unitary viewpoint where management and the employees are all together trying to maintain the goal of the company. And then the, the, and then the pluralist viewpoint is that of the interest of the employers, whereby the employers don't really see, see the employee as, as anything, rather a means to an end, which is basically like a contract job. So you're basically just paid to come and do your work and then you leave. And then we can also see examples as um, maybe in our modern day um, jobs given to unskilled laborers, where you just call your carpenter, you call your plumber, or oh, yeah, come and do my work, or oh, yeah, once you're done, I don't hear what you have to say, just do your thing and go. And then we looked at um, employee relationship policies. The policies expresses or it, it shows or it expresses the, the, the philosophy and philosophy in this case, ways at which people must abide, principles people must follow of the organization, of um, the sort of relationship that is wanted between the management and the employees and how it should be managed. And in that, we looked at four approaches, which is at adversarial, traditional, partnership, and power sharing. And in all this, um, adversarial was speaking about um, the management decides what should be done and employees have no choice but to follow. Traditional is more of a working relationship whereby the manager proposes and then the employee or the workforce just cooperates. The partnership is more of a, is more of a fair one where, where employees can come up with um, um, ideas of how the organization should move forward. And then power sharing is where both of them are working in 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 line with what is meant to be achieved. Now we looked at the objective. The objective basically is uh, is um, to make sure there's a good relationship, there's a good working relationship, there's great cooperation, there's effective management, control of costs, development of an engaged and committed workforce. Then um, the areas that are usually covered in this um, entails trade union recognition, which if it if your if the organization has something like that, it also looks at the collective bargaining of the company where both people can be able to or both parties can be able to you know um, come to an agreement as a, in terms of maybe reward um, sharing and all of that. Then employee relationship employee relations procedures, participation and involvement, how it should go, partnership, employment relationship. Um, harmonization of the work and then um, and then the working arrangements how work should actually be done and we looked at the strategies too the strategies is basically about uh, the, what the policy is set to achieve strategies of um, of the employee relationship policies is, is basically what basically what is meant to achieve and and in this case we looked at um, we it covers a lot of it covers a lot of um, of places such as altering forms of recognition and, and so many others and then um, employee relationship climates we looked at that and um, management style in employee relationship where you have the authoritarian the paternal, paternalistic consultative and constitutional these are, and opportunistic these are all types of these are all the um, these are management styles that come under the employee relationship policies, and um, yeah, so many others. Which, 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 because of time, I cannot be able to really go into them. But um, I believe from the little I've been able to say, 
I've been able to maybe touch a few. Little, um, little indeed. Little indeed. Now, this is the idea. You, you and um, Ogolua have technically covered everything written in the text. But I tell you the truth. This is the beauty of this class. When you begin to see them in practical expressions. In weeks three, four, five, there about, we've talked about some systems in HR, the underlying theories. Those are the things that you don't see them written in black and white, but they are the things that find expression in the workplace. So today we have Mr. Olushola Adetiba. My old guy was here during week two to take us on HR strategy. I'm sure we can still remember. And um, it's my Oga and all of us are here to learn together. So today is here to take us on strategic employee relations. And I am sure at the end of this class, we will all surely be richly, um, richly educated and um, gain insight. So let's welcome Mr. Shola Adetiba as he takes us on this session on strategic employee relations. Mr. Shola, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, to uh, my class members. Thanks a lot, guys. You guys are fantastic. It's nice to hear this kind of things from HR people and the way you guys are talking. They, they, I'm very, very motivated. I'm highly motivated. So uh, today we want to talk about strategic HR relation, uh, strategic employee relations. Um, and the way I want to do it is, like my guy said, it's going to be very practical. Um, Sorry, Mr. Let me ask you. Yes, sir. Sorry, Mr. Hela. You don't want to put it in your presentation mode again? Okay, 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 okay. Uh -huh. Because I know that. Uh -huh. Okay, so you can all see it as presentation mode, right? No, you now you now need to go and share your screen and pick the presentation screen, not the. Go to your share screen again. Pick the presentation screen itself. I know it's been a while. It's been Nine... a while. It's been a while. So let me do this. Maybe stop sharing. Yes, that's what I need to do actually. Okay, stop sharing. Then share again. Now share. Look for the um, presentation tab. That's the one you have to select now. Okay. Uh, let me do this. Just give me a minute. So Telegram will not disgrace me for my family members. No, you won't. <laughs> okay, have you gone? Have, okay, have you clicked on share screen? Yes. On, now, go through. You will see these displayed tabs, right? Yes. Can you see the tab that is in presentation mode? Or have so you stopped? Not, yeah. okay. I have to escape it to be able to. No. Do okay. That. This so, is what. You, okay. This is the solution. Go back to your PowerPoint, put it in presentation mode. Use your tab, Alt tab, to navigate. Okay. You don't uh, need to. Uh, okay. So Alt tab. Let me see. So can you see your presentation tab now? I thought the PowerPoint won't disgrace me. Village people. Can you <laughs> see it at presentation mode now? No, it is still in the PowerPoint um, mode. Not the presentation mode. Okay, just 
from here, sir. Put it on presentation mode from here. Sorry, guys. Um, this is what technology does. Okay. Put it in presentation mode. So can you see it now? It's a now presentation no. mode. Now, now, click. You hold your tab and your halt and your tab together. Okay. Sorry. Just give me one minute. So. Yes, sir. Sorry. Let me share. This thing. This is. Ah. <laughs> we are all used to. We are mostly used to Zoom. Zoom, Google, this, Meet. all of that. Okay. So, okay, now I'm getting it. So, Alt Tab, right? Yes, Alt Tab, yes. It shows you nav navigation. So, you navigate back now. to the Telegram. Just navigate back to the Telegram um, window. Yes. From the Telegram window, now do your share screen. Hmm. Now you can see the presentation tab, right? Yeah. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. Apologies to everybody. So we've learned another one today. Uh, there's something you need to understand, and that is learning to relearn, unlearn, and relearn, and unlearn, and relearn. Telegram has become a new mode of conversations because Google Meet has now been timed. Every 40 minutes, you have to log out. It will, I mean, it will log you out. So now everybody's coming to Telegram. I've done a few meetings on Telegram, but this is the first I've had the privilege of having to share my screen. So. I loved Uten. Uten, you did a good job. So permit me, can I ask you, Uten, where do you work currently? Yeah, good afternoon, sir. So I work in a logistic company. Yeah, I work in a logistic okay. company, Millimpex Global. Okay, that's lovely. So uh where is that? It's in Lagos. No it's in Lagos. Okay, okay. So yes, uh I like the way you are sad. I like your confidence. I like the way you talk. And I like people that take up challenges. So my first Thank challenge you. to you is I like the way you've explained it. So if we all understand that strategy is about long-term, overall vision, and all of that. So the next question I want to ask you is we are in December, right? Yes, sir. What is likely going to happen in your company in terms of employee relations in terms of employee management in general what are the likely things that will happen between december and january can you guess can you just give us share some ideas with us employee relations in my in my so um coming from coming from where i've come from um i yeah. i started off yeah, I started off at, at this company as, as an admin guy. So um mm. over the years I've been able to push for 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 HR. So um at this thing, while I was basically talking about the basis and then the viewpoints, I realized yeah, yeah it's like you've really done a good thing. You've gone from plural, um, pluralist viewpoint to almost unitary, but it's not really there yet. So in terms of employee relationship. In in our organization, at the moment, yeah. this is like this is like this is like um this is the uh, this this is our peak period in terms of business. End of the year, logistic companies, yeah. freight, and all the, all of that. So, in terms of em employee relations, it is expected staffs giving their best during this period because definitely there might be overloads of work. You would have to work overtime in in some certain areas. But then the company. The company in their own part, because since since I I I liaise with the senior management, I'm able to tell them the things or the little things that are necessary or the things that are needed to actually um, be able to push these guys to actually give in their best. So okay. I try to um, um, I try to propose things like um, what do they call them, like like um, overtime pays. Which which okay. the company definitely would do during this period because 
we might have situations where we we'll have to work beyond um That's our contract yeah mm-hmm. and then um and then we also have things like december bonus and december bonuses this this comes from the this comes from the reward angle then okay um, mm-hmm. uh in creating a safe environment basically this, the environment is not is not perfect but i feel it's something everybody can work with it's okay. not perfect, but it's something everybody can work with at the moment. I, I hope okay. that answers your question, sir. Well, you've done very well. You've done very well. I like, at least you've seen something. So the concept of strategy or uh, strategic employee relations, like you have talked about, is that you have foreseen that December is your peak period. So you have also made provision by making a request to management that people are going to work over time. Let's keep money for them to pay them over time. People are going to stay late in the office. Is there something we can use to encourage them? And then for the rest of us, maybe you have never noticed it, but this is the peak period when people change jobs. This is the time people are attending interviews. They are going from one place to the other. Because by January, that's what... In fact, by the end of January, you will know whether you truly still have the number of staff you had last, uh, this year. Do you understand? So there is something, if you are in, if there's anybody in the health, se- health sector, we are expecting that in the health sector, there'll be a lot of migration. Germany, uh, Singapore, and a few other countries are opening up in the health sector. There'll be a whole lot of migration. Australia, all of them are opening up. Canada is still is still collecting. And all of these things are going to happen. On the same staff, all of us are struggling to get. So strategy will say, if I know that in January, there is a possibility that staff will resign, I would have this number of staff again. What do I do to prepare for January? What do I do to ensure that we are balanced in January? We don't, I don't get a situation where I'm stretched, everybody is stretched, trying to get good stuff and all of this kind of stuff. What do we do? That's the concept of strategy and strategic employee relations. You know that people work over time, we make provision for payments. You know that people will jump from job to job. What do we do to succor them? So all those parties, want all those things. All of those things are motivations to ensure people stay. But you know that whether you pay 13 months or you don't pay, the person that will go will go. So the concept of strategic employee relations says, let's look at the employee holistically. Let's look at our people holistically. So like you said, there's a point of compensation. There's a place of benefits. There's a place of training. So this is the end of the year. Do we, as HR officers, HR managers, HR, whatever we are doing in HR, have we started getting ready our manpower plan for 2024? Because management will tell you, our strategy for 2024 is this. What is the manpower plan? What capacity of people do we need to achieve that strategy? What number of people, quantity, Capacity, quality, quantity of people do we need to achieve that strategy? How many engineers do I need to achieve this target? How many salespeople do I need to hit this financial target? How many this, how many that, all of those. A lot of companies are doing retreats. They are doing, they are arranging end of year parties and all of that. They are calling figures, they are talking and a lot of information is going out. How does HR leverage on that information to be able to plan better for the staff and for the organization. And that's what a summary of what we'll do this afternoon. I'll try as much as possible not to bore you. Right? So, okay, let me see. So, 
Can you see my screen? Hello? Can everybody still see my screen? So yes, sir, we can. Okay, okay. I just needed to confirm that. All right. So at this, at the end of this session, we believe that all of us will be able to understand the process of employee relations, the basis, the policies, the strategies, the, the climate, all those things that deals with employee unions. For instance, now we are talking about overtime. Do you know that there are companies that till today, they do not pay overtime. It is believed in that company that when you do overtime, you are just going the extra mile. And that is what is expected from you. They don't pay anything like overtime. That is where they stand. Since the increase in fuel price, so for those in Lagos, I don't know how much fuel is going in Lagos. Currently in Abuja, fuel is around 650 naira per liter. I know companies in this town in Abuja that they have not increased salaries by one naira and staff are still going to work. Staff are still going to work. They have not increased salary by one naira. Staff are still going to work. So we need to understand the, this concept about employee relations. It's strategic. That before the operational things happen, let's plan the overall idea so that and is that the overall idea will not start cascading down? So this is the outline of what you do. I don't want to bore us with outlines and all of that. So let's go. Like, like we say, it's a coaching uh, session. Strategic employee relations is concerned with formulation and implementation of plans. That is all. You formulate the plan and you implement the plan. And it is designed, focused on very significant things. The harmonious and productive relationship between employees and employers or between employees and the organization. So let me say this. I always like to say it whenever I have the opportunity, when I'm taking this class. Um, when Uten was joining the logistics company he works with, he came in with a plan in his mind that after so so and so period, I should be at this level, I should be ending this. So what it means is that he's looking at growth. Everybody joined the organization you are working today for a reason. There is a need in your life. There is a need, whether it is learning, whether it is skill, whether it is hunger, whether it is whatever. And trust me, hunger is a major motivation why people take up jobs. I have seen a person take a role lower than what she used to be. She took a lower road just to be able to work in an international firm because she was go about to travel out. So she needed the experience of working in an international firm. So she took a lower role with lower pay just to be able And she did that for one year. By the following year, she was gone. <laughs> you understand? So people come into your organizations for various reasons. Trust me, nobody loves the organization. Nobody loves it. They are there for a reason. All of us have our reasons. Even the organization has a selfish reason for hiring people. We need to achieve our goals. We need to achieve our plans. We need to achieve our objectives. And the same thing, people too come in for day. They have their goals, they have their plans, they have their objectives. Our work as HR is to be able to bring the organizational goals and the people goals merge it together and they show that they align. That's where it's strategic employee relations come in. So you know that there are people that join your organization and the only reason why they join is because they are hungry. They've been out of job for three years, two years, one year, six months, different time periods. And now they are seeing a job that's offering them an amount. I don't know if all of us could remember when Dangote was hiring PhD people to pay them 100,000 Naira as drivers. Where are all those drivers now? <laughs> See, hunger can drive people to a, to a significant point. After that hunger is quenched, the person will move higher. That's how strategy works. So it's our responsibility as HR managers be able to identify that is this hunger or it is a need what is that need how can i 
align this person's need and my organization's need. Do you understand me? So, we are looking at a partnership that is productive. It has to be productive. If it is not productive for the organization, what do you do? You end the partnership. Let's end the relations. Ah, this thing cannot work. It's not uh, some relationships that some of us enter into. And then it's one-sided. One person is providing everything. And the other person say, they will not ask one day, what are you even bringing to this table? You say, I'm bringing myself. Eh, go and hold yourself a bit. So you understand. A concept of employee relations states that you must formulate and implement the plan to make sure both of them match. So for that to happen, there are different approaches, which Utin has already talked about. There's the adversarial approach, where the organization decides what it wants to do, and the employees fit in. So, like I said, there are companies in Abuja. Fuel went from, uh, was it 195 or so, to 600 Naira. And the company has not increased salary by one, they have not reduced the number of days you are coming to work. And they are like, hello, even we too, now we are affected by fuel. So for you to get salary increase, you do more work. Employees will what? They will, is it that you are lying or you resign? There's no this thing. That's adversarial. Oga, you are expected at work today. Uh, sir, I don't have transfer. Okay, Oga, if you are going to sit at home, then please resign. So the only way employees exercise power is by refusing to cooperate. But how long can that last in the market where the employer has options? So also does the employee, but you know how easy it is for the employee to get an option as against how easy it is the employer to get his own options. The second approach is traditional approach. Traditional approach is a reasonable good day-to-day -day working relationship but management still proposes, but the workforce have representatives, staff union, you know, uh, ASU, it's traditional. They have a union, Nubifi as Bifi, National Association of Medical and Dental Professionals, all those things. Those are unions that, no, those are associations outside, but within the organization, where you have ASU, so you have Unilori ASU, Unilag ASU, Lasso ASU, uh, Uniben ASU, all of them have their sub sub bodies in those institutions. You have Association of uh, Federal Road Safety Staff, Senior Staff, you have Senior Staff of the uh, Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities within an institution. Those people, their job, they have, uh, just as you have your staff, you know, government. Who are representatives of the staff those those people have their job and their work is to represent employees they go and they, that's the best they, they will come they will shout 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 uh asu went on i mean nigeria labor congress yeah went on the strike not not too far away about a few weeks ago they went on a, on an alleged <laughs> like one of my friends said and alleged strike. He said there was no strike because a lot of government organizations were working. They assumed they went on the strike. Two days later, they called it off. So, but in the traditional case, if employees still don't accept the situation, if you say you will still work, even though you have representatives, your representatives can be bought. So your boss can choose to increase the salary of your association or staff union leaders and check it out. You'll say, ah, management is working. We are working, you know, when they start speaking those big English, we are working assiduously with the management of the organization to ensure the welfare of our esteemed staff members are risen to the highest level possible. You know that they are scamming you. The scam is they are scamming you. <laughs> then the third, the third one is partnership. Partnership talks about involvement of employees in drawing. Remember, if you remember our definition of strategic, there is a design, there is a formulation, and there is implementation. In partnership, 
the employees together will sit down together and draw up and execute the policy. But management still retains the right to manage. We are still management. But we can call you and say, come, we want to do a new policy around, let me see, uh, I'm using Uten is my example today, logistics. So we want to do a new policy around this overtime thing. So can, can staff recommend, what do you think? We don't want to be just be turning out money every time. Somebody will come, I did overtime. I did three hours overtime. I did five hours overtime. I did this. How do we want to now reward staff for overtime without churning out money? And then uh, the, the staff will now gather together. They'll say, oh, you can give us this. Do that, do this, do this. Whenever we do, we have our own parcels. Can we send it for free? Along with, you understand all those things. But at the end of the day, management still has to manage. And then the final one is power sharing. Uten has talked about it. It's power sharing. Employees are involved in day to day decision making, day to day strategic decision making. Oh, management wants to fire somebody. And they call the staff union or they call a town hall meeting in a small in a small organization. They call the town hall meeting and say, We have written, we have queried this person, we have done this, we have done this. This is the final straw. Effective, sorry, effective immediately or effective by an effective end of month, we are firing this person. And staff they ah, please, let's give him one more chance. He's he's not a very bad person, he's just a slow learner or this, that, that, employees are involved. And my question, so can somebody ask me, which one of these approaches do you think is best? Can somebody answer? Which one do you think is best? Volunteers, please, quickly. I'm not hearing anybody's voice, so. Nobody wants Nobody to cut the door. We can hear you, sir. I can hear you. All right. So, which one of these four do you think is the best? For me, I feel partnership. Partnership. Hmm. Why? Why do you feel so? Why do you feel so? Because they are involving the employer, the employees. It's not just like a holistic approach or just the um, management, the employees too. They also have an input in this for me. That's why I think mm. partnership. Okay. I like that. I like your confidence. So what will happen is let's continue. At the end of the class, I will ask again. Because I'm going to, we are going to discuss some cases we're going to i'm going to share some examples and then we'll talk around it so let's continue i like that so what are policy areas in employee relations like we said remember they are strategic we're on strategic employee relations and when i talked about strategy it's what something that affects everybody it's not day to day thing it affects everybody it's a global thing. it's a long-term thing so first of all is trade union recognition we have a choice to recognize trade unions or not. So I started my career in banking. And when I joined, I joined one of the old generation banks, and that's Union Bank. We call them, they called them the old generation bank. And unfortunately, those ones are picking up and catching up with the new ones now. So I joined Union Bank as a graduate trainee, or as officer three or so thereabouts. So I when I joined, there was this thing that came around. Ah, these guys have come. They want to take our jobs. All these young boys. Uh, Funke, uh, I can't remember her son. We used to call her Auntie Funke then. Say, Funke boys have come. They'll come and collect our jobs. This, that, that. So they were trying to have some issues. There were a lot of issues. There were some terminations. There were some things. So it was around that time, a lot of banks sacked a whole lot of their staff 
I brought in a lot of young new guys. And guess what? NLC was angry. NLC did what they call picketing. They went to all the banks in Nigeria and they started locking their doors. They locked it, they chased everybody out and locked the door. Why will you sack a staff? This one, that one. It is illegal, it is unlawful, and all of this and all of this. Now, a strategic employee relations states that we need to look at the concept of trade union. Is it, should it be recognized or not? How does the organization want to deal with employees? Do we want to deal with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis or on a general basis? Do you understand? Do we want to deal with them as individuals or as unions? So as unions, they can wake up in the morning and lock the door and nobody can work. And that day, we lose the profit for that day. We lose revenue, we lose customer relationship, we lose customer trust for that day. That is one thing. So they now looked forward and went again and said, whichever one we pick, whether we accept it or not, there's something that is always very important, and that is the next point, collective bargaining. That before we agree on a policy, before management rolls out a policy, all of us must sit down together and agree on it, both staff and management. It's the same thing with what we call constitutional review in Nigeria. Before there's a review in constitution, the people of Nigeria must agree to it. So people are elected, they select people, they come. It's a whole lot. Obasanjo did it in 1999 or so, thereabout. And there's a whole lot of things that is involved. Because we want to say this collective bargaining that we want to do. Should it be done individually or we just, okay, so we just call selected people. So we tell the employees, select people to come and represent you, and the management will select their own and they agree or something. Or we call a town hall meeting and everybody is there. Now, these things are possible or impossible based on some very critical factors. For instance, if you are like Zenith Bank that has almost 6,000 employees scattered across 36 states of Nigeria and over seven countries on the in the world, how do you call town hall meeting for that kind of a thing? So at the end of the day, you still have to go through a particular system. However, if you are like Olushola and Ku, that has just four of you, and all of you are inside somebody's palo, and that is where your office is and everything. So there are there, all of you can sit down and take an agreement and move on. If you are under 50, all of you are within the same location. It is easy to hold the town hall meeting and come to a point where you can bargain or something and agree on it. So, so the third thing that now comes in there is the procedure for the employee relation. How do we administer it? Talks about the nature and the scope. How do we administer redundancy? How do we administer grief? How do we administer leave? How do you okay, do you know that there are companies today that their maternity leave is four months? It's four months. But civil service is still three months. I don't know if it has changed. The last I checked, it was still three months that is in the uh, labor law. And like I said, I'm don't know if it has changed. The last I checked is still three months that is there. However, in the civil service, if you are going in the year, in the, in the particular calendar year that you have your maternity leave, you can still take your annual leave. In some private institutions, they will tell you once you have maternity leave, you don't have annual leave again. How are these things administered? How is discipline administered? In some institutions, they will tell you, if you offend, you are gone. They don't want to hear, hey, I'm sorry, it's all happening. Mm -mm. Then you offend, face the door. It's like if you're in the university, for those, if you've got, those of us that went to tertiary institutions and all of that, that have a lot of discipline there. Once you fight and you are caught, in uni law in there, we used to call it face tanker. You are going. There is there is no explanation you want to do. You fight with a fellow students and you are caught. It's expulsion. Even in some workplaces, you fight with a fellow colleague. It's summary dismissal. How will it be administered? 
Somebody stole in the office. How do we administer discipline? Somebody manipulated the, the attendance register. How is discipline manipulated? I mean, how is discipline administered? How do you administer to discipline to somebody who refuses to take direct instruction because he is August brothers, sisters, wives, under brother, younger brothers, cousins, sisters, so because they are related to the CEO or related to something. How do you manage them? Then the fourth thing talks about participation and involvement. To what extent is management willing to allow employees to have a voice? I need to say this very clearly, and I will repeat it everywhere I go. HR is not for employees. I can beat my chest about it. HR is also not for management. HR is for the sustainability of the organization. Our work is to ensure that this organization remains what a growing, a going concern. Sorry, a going concern that this in ten years time somebody will come through this organization. That in two years time this person would have gone. I would, maybe I would even be here. But when somebody comes, they can make reference that oh this person was here during this time, and then when they write a reference request for me there. Somebody can pick it up and look at the records. So the question is, what extent do we want employees to get involved? Some people tell you that, no, it's not their business. And you can't blame them. If you have started a company before, or you have started a business before, and you have grown it to a particular point where you now employ, employ people and pay salaries, bros, it's very difficult to let go. I used to tell my employees, your company is like your second wife. But many times your first wife at all will be begging for your attention, the way you will give it to your organization. So if somebody has grown the company and built it to a particular point, why do you think the person should allow employees so much say? Who don't, they, they don't even care whether the company makes money. You know that there are people that are today, what Gata or Gauta, salary is short. The day salary is delayed, they are going to revolt. They are going to fight. But whether they are hitting their targets or not, whether they are doing anything, doing constructive or not, it's not a problem. So HR needs to begin to look at those things. What extent do we want to involve people? Because at the end of the day, the day the owner says this company ceases to exist, I'm not interested in doing business in Nigeria again. Everybody is back on the street. So. <laughs> Everybody is back on the street. Except of course, if the company is a limited liability company that's registered and all of that, then you can now begin to talk about other things like that. It's, or it's on the uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange and all of this kind of stuff. Then partnerships. To what extent do we want to partner? Is partnership approach the uh, partnership approach that, we, that um, my sister talked about? To what extent do we want to take it to? What is what what? what what was it desirable? Then the employment relationship itself. Do we want to do collective or individual? So somebody will tell you that, you know, is, is, most of us have it on our offer letter that your salary is private. It's a confidential information. Even your friends should not hear about it, right? It's calm. I can guarantee you that all of us that are working here know the salaries of our colleagues. We know the salaries of a lot of our friends. Not even because we are HR, but just because some of those people will just, in the middle of conversation, ah, they cut my salary by 50%. This one, that one, that one, that one. How would you pay adult man uh, 25000 naira? What am I supposed to do with it? So if they cut your salary by 50% and they pay you 25000 so the salary is 50000 naira now. You get so people in conversations they say it's say all these things and all that. But your employee uh, employee relationship says that every relationship must be backed with a contract. That's number one. Every relationship between organization and employee, between employer and employee, there must be a contract. But this contract we are saying is it a general contract? Should the contract that applies to Utem apply to me? Should the contract that applies to me apply to Mr. Kyle? Should the contract that applies to Mr. Kyle they apply to to uh to philip do you understand so is it a collective contract or an individual contract 
to the agreement to be collective or individual based. And then we now talk of harmonization uh, that Uten talked about, harmonization of contracts, of I mean, terms and conditions for staff and manual workers. And all. So the conditions that a permanent staff has is different from the condition that a contract staff has. The condition that an architect has is different from the conditions a mason has. Condition HR has is different from the condition a field worker, a dispatch rider has. So all those things are supposed to be, we should be able to harmonize them to a point. This is still strategic employee relations and then working arrangement. So we need to understand something in setting up an organization. I'm going to take us back to take us forward. So in setting up an organization, you know, the average Nigerian mind, you say, ah, I'm starting a company very soon. Ah, come and hire my sister, hire my brother, hire this, hire that. They say, okay, so we now hire people. We will now start looking for work for them. The correct order is that you create the work. Then you now find people that match the work, that, can, that match the requirements for the work, that can execute the work, and you now hire them to fit it. So I always say this, I'm not against you hiring your brother or your sister or your wife or your cousin or your family member or you're hiring somebody as a favor. My only condition is this, if you have to hire, hire somebody you can fire. That's strategic. Hire somebody you can fire. So no matter the number of years, it is a policy. In fact, I put it in every organization I've worked in, I put it in inside the HR policy. Everybody we hire must be able, to, we must be able to fire the person. Everybody, we must hire somebody we can fire. Because the day we hire somebody we can fire, we have bought markets. We have bought markets on, <laughs> you must be able to fire. You hire somebody you can fire, that's one. Number two, you hire based on requirements. I have CEOs today that are on my case. They want to fire somebody, but they can't fire the person because they know that if they fire the person, they are going for they are going home in this December. It's family meeting they will do. They will finish the case in family meeting. Do you understand? I need to move fast. So still under policy choices, there's the new realism. New realism emphasizes HR and industrial relations. The aim is to merge both of them together. Let me explain this. So you are a HR manager, and I know some of us have intention to work in foreign companies, international NGOs, you know, jackpot, travel out, and, and I'll tell you, as a HR person, if you have intentions of leaving Nigeria or working for an international company, whichever one it is, go and understand their labor laws, their industrial relations, their labor laws. How does it work? So if you have intention to jump out to UK next year, go and understand the UK labor law now. If you have a, a, a plan to jump out to the US, go and understand U, US labor law. Understand the Italian, understand all of those things, and there are colonies too. Then choice of, uh, the second choice is traditional collectivism. That all of us will come, we'll sit down at the table. How do we, uh, management, uh, we, we prioritize industrial relations without HR. So what is, let me explain this. So this one says, ah, let's leave people first. This is process. So in traditional collectivism, process is more important than the person. Process is more important than the person. Individualized HRM. So in this case, we have very high priority to the HR. That's the people, but zero industrial relations. So, oh, we like people in this place, in this organization. We are people friendly. We are people this. We are people that. We are people this. However, it is not common for an organization to value people above its process. They are very few. They are very few. And then the one that's very that is bad, the black hole, they have zero industrial relations. <laughs> they don't care who you are. This is more like a labor. 
it's more like a labor system. They will drive and drive and drive and drive. So I'm moving as fast as possible because I just noticed that I have nearly 20, 30 minutes thereabouts. So strategies for employee relations. Since we are saying we are doing strategic employee relations, what do we do? How, employee relations strategy set out how the relations policy. Yes, sir. sir? Okay, I thought that was funny. How do you know employee relations policy aims are to be achieved? So the first question is for all of us here, do you have an employee relations policy? That's the first thing. If you don't have, that is your assignment. Go and create one for your organization. And then you send it to management for approval and then communicate it to all staff. We talk about the intentions expressed by the employee relations strategies may be may direct the organization towards the following. What do I mean by strategy? So what are the strategy must direct you somewhere? What is your direction about people? How do we handle people in this organization? In this organization, we are people friendly. So we have sleeping areas. Uh, we, do, we have sleeping pods, table tennis uh, play, playing place, lawn tennis rackets, this, that, 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 basketball courts, food courts, where you just go have fun. I believe that employees are more productive having fun than doing all of that. Fine. The COVID now hit. All of us all of a sudden discovered that we can work from home. Okay, so it's not time to come back to work. They say, hey, we don't need to come back to work. So you don't want to have fun again? <laughs> so you see, there are a lot of things that happen. And as, and as an organization, you need to take it to heart. As HR managers, as HR people, you need to take them to heart. So first of all, we need, does it alter the forms of recognition? So do we recognize staff union? You know, there's ASU, there's SANU. They will tell you we don't recognize. There's ASBIFI, there's NUBIFI. There were a lot of associations of university lecturers. And later they now say, no, we only recognize one, and it is ASU. All the others, we don't recognize them. There were a lot mm -hmm. of associations for people in finance, bankers committee, this, that. Later they say, okay, for employees, so Mubifi and Asbifi, that's all. For management, bankers committee, that's all. You understand? So you need to decide which one are we going to recognize. Now, it also changes in form and content of procedural agreement. So what it means is that it is not a one size fit all. You need to take context in mind as you are setting up these policies. Then what are bargaining structures? Is, are there bargaining structures at all? Is there any way you can have bargains? So today we have conversation bargaining. So when you want to hire, it's like, how much would you like to take? You start tell you, I want one million. And I say, okay, sorry, we can't afford one million. I will look take some 50. They will now negotiate as if they are buying tomato. And then when they find them, they said, you start tell you, no, sorry. The least I can do is one million. Anything below one million, sorry, I can't live where I am. And they say, oh, thank you very much. So it is a healthy bargain. There's nothing wrong with it. Somebody else will never ask you, say, for this role, we offer 500,000 naira. Say, no, I was expecting that I will get more because I'm already earning above. Oh, sorry. We can't pay you more than that. It will affect our budget. It will affect this. Identity. Thank you very much for having you. Bye bye. <laughs> no bargaining. This is what we can pay. This is it. Each one has a unique situation. We need to find it and be able to apply it. Then achieve the achievement of increased levels of commitment through involvement or participation. So you need to also be careful that there are times that staff commitment and participation will draw you back. What you are focused on is what? Commitment towards achievement. If commitment is not towards achievement, then you might need to stop uh, participation of staff. And just take a decision. Because your focus, remember, achievement. Deliberately bypassing trade union representatives. Banks do this a lot. They just bypass. Trade union, we shout, 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 shout. When management is ready, they will increase salary. 
Uh, we are living in unhealthy conditions. Uh, this, that, 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 that. So take for instance, I have a friend that works for LNG. Is it LNG or NLNG? I don't even know what name they call themselves now. I know all of them have been rebranded. So he works, he's an engineer, he's a deep sea engineer. And he spends two weeks on and offshore. So two weeks on, two weeks off. And whenever he's on top of the water, for those two weeks, he gets credited as at 2017, 2018, thereabout. He gets almost 2 million naira for those two weeks while he's on water. He gets 2 million naira credited to him. For that rank, he was it's graded based on rank. He gets two million naira every two weeks. That is minus salary. And then so we're talking somewhere, and he now said it that these people are even cheating us. The money for my rank, for my level, I'm supposed to be getting up to six, seven million. And somebody beside him was like, eh? You mean just to stay on top of water? They give you two million naira. Say, I'll come and stay. In fact, I'll be sleeping there every month. I will stay the whole month there. I don't mind. Different situations. So the trade union have tried their best to try to, the management is never listening to them. So in order to, <laughs> management does a lot of things. I don't want to talk about that. Sometimes they do some very, very unethical things just to settle trade unions and all of that. But that's not my focus. Now, increasing the extent of management control, developing partnerships, all of these are strategies. However, again, very important because again, remember that we are talking strategic employee relations. For that to happen, for us to be able to draw up an, a plan for future growth, and then we want to consider whether we want to use trade union or want a staff association, or we want, I'm using all these words, these are not the words I'm supposed to use, I'm using it so that we can understand it, or we want collective bargaining, collective agreement, or we just want to treat everybody individually. Whichever one we take, very important is climate. Climate. You need to be able to have an opportunity where if my staff trust me that I am pro their welfare, if my staff know that I am for their welfare, most likely they will need staff union. If they know the way I treat them, the way I relate with them, the way I take their matters up, if they escalate an issue to me, I treat it immediately and all of that. If they know I am for them, most likely most organizations will not have staff unions because they know that management is for them. And that's where trust comes in. The second one is fairness. That I am fair in my dealings. Now, fairness says... The law that applies to A must apply to B. The law that applies to A, if A comes late and I deduct 1,000 Naira, B comes late, I should deduct 1,000 Naira. Yeah. I shouldn't make excuses for B because he's the daughter of the managing director's uh, girlfriend somewhere. You know those things now, HR, we get to know them. You know that this person is a girl's girlfriend. This one is Oga's girlfriend's daughter. This one is Oga's senior brother's girlfriend's. You know those things. We see them. We yeah. still need to exercise yeah. fairness. It's very, very important. Then openness about actions. We need to be open. We need to be honest. Let people see it. We are open about it. We, it, it this openness, it creates a climate that HR can be trusted. While we know that HR is not for staff, we want them to trust us. We want staff to be able to be vulnerable with us. We need harmony. We need resolution of conflict, that there's always a win-win. And then commitment to each other's interest, that the staff is committed to the organization's interest. The organization is committed to the staff's interest. In that way, everybody can always win. So this is the part I like a lot. I've had to deal with staff unions and associations and all of that. And there are organizations that have unions. There are organizations with South unions. If your organization doesn't have a union, what will you have? Authoritarian government. Management as you are advised to resign with immediate effect. 
you know what that means? You are fired, though. It means, please, I need your resignation letter now. You can't reject the advice. <laughs> you understand? You know, there, there are these things we see in HR that, that are quite interesting. So they say, you, you are advising me to resign, but I cannot reject the advice. So what kind of advice is that? It's authoritarian. You are advised to proceed on a two-week suspension. You cannot reject it. You must go. Do you understand? It's authoritarian. Management has decided that going forward, all staff will have 20,000 Naira added to their salaries for inconvenience for the transport. Thank you very much. This will take effect from January 1st, 2024. That's all. Nobody is saying, ah, 20,000 Naira, how is it going to be? Is it that me, that I'm officer one, I will get 20,000 Naira? And of somebody that is cleaner, we also get 20,000 Naira. How will this money be shared? Uh, they don't want to, the management have told you, I sent you a mover. It is paternalistic. So, we say we are, we are, we are in a paternal culture, the main rule, the main, the main take charge, and that's how it is. Management, take, management group, they take charge, they take the decision. Yours is to align. And then if you notice that both where there's union and there's no union, it is opportunistic. So it is where there is no union, it is opportunistic for management. So management will do things and get away with it because nobody can fight. The best you can do, you will grumble and complain. When you get tired, you resign. <laughs> I'm going away. Or you will write to management that you feel this medium is not right. This, that, 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 you will talk with mouth, you will write, you will beg, you will do everything, babas. But where we have unions, there is some level of consultation. There's a level of consultation. So we have things like collective bargaining. So, oh, we want to start a new thing. We want to do this, we want to do that. Oh, okay, let's bargain. Oh, this is how we want it done. This, this is this, this is that, that is that. There is some bargaining, there is some level of negotiation. Then there is constitutionalism. So when you have constitutional, that then in the organization, the constitution is your handbook. So we want to follow things by the handbook. So people are respectful of the handbook. The management too is respectful of the handbook. And then the same thing happens to opportunistic. It is people can take advantage of the situation. So whether management or staff, Either can take advantage of the situation. However, there's an ethical, ethical approach. Businesses aim to achieve prosperity and growth and survival. Ideally, success should benefit all stakeholders in the organization. Owners, management, employees, customers, and suppliers should benefit. However, <laughs> I like this one. I had to copy it verbatim because I loved it. However, the single-minded pursuit of business objectives can act in detriment of employees' well-being and security. And there may be tension between achieving business purpose and the social and ethical obligations of the organization to its employees. But the chances are the chances of attaining a good climate of employee relations are slight if no attempt is made to recognize and act on the organization's obligations to its members. So we are saying that in a we are sat, we, in a situation where ceteris is paribus, yeah. in a situation where ceteris is paribus, eh, where every other thing is equal. Everybody should benefit from success. But we know that in Nigeria and in every other country of the world, Ceteris is not paribus. Things are not equal. Things are not the same thing. So we now, everybody just try to find a balancing technique for it. So what is the employee rela employment relationship? Any questions so far before I go to this? Any questions so far?
Okay. I am assuming no questions. Oh, okay. Is that a question? Yes, sir, please. I have a question. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, so please, when you're talking about the employee relations climate, I didn't yes. exactly get it very well. I know you said it's basically it has to do with uh, the perception of management and then them having representatives for them, like the unions and the likes, especially if the organization management are not um, actually um, fighting, no, not fighting, like speaking for them, speaking for the employees when there are issues. But I don't think I, I got most of the things very well. Okay, yes, okay. Um, you put up the slide where you, yeah, especially where you talked about um, resolution of conflict and, and commitments. I didn't, I didn't get that part very well. All right, thank you. So let me give you an instance. So okay. commitment to each other's interest. Like I said in the beginning, when you joined your organization, Sorry, uh, which organization do you work with? If you work, if which organization okay. do you work with? Yeah. I'm working with um, Delight um, Solar, it's a solar company, Delight. Beautiful. So when you joined them, you joined them with an objective in your mind, right? There was something you want to achieve, right? There was something in your mind to achieve. There is something in the heart of management to also achieve. So what did they do? Management gave you an offer letter. And they said, this is your offer. This is your job description. If you do this job, we will give you this money at the end of the month. At the end of the month, every time you successfully hit this job, you will get this amount credited to your account. Now, Apart from that, we need to now start looking at it. What else do I now get? Because when you join that company, you join that company with an intention that you had your own needs. And that's the part where the climate comes in that we are commitment to we are committed to each other's growth and each other's interests. The management will do everything possible to ensure that on the 28th latest we all salaries some are solar home systems. Okay, good. So I'm saying that management will ensure that on the 28th, all salaries are paid. But the same way, management ex expects that you as HR, you will give us high quality staff. You will give us a training plan. You will give us this. You will give us that. You will manage our staff. You will tell, give us advice on how to manage conflict, employee management, employee relations administration, all those things, it is your job to provide that advice to management. And when management is not seeing it, we'll say, come, this relationship is not working. Do you understand? That we are expected for us to have a healthy climate. Management is, is committed to employee interest. Employees are committed to management interest. Which brings me to resolution of conflict. So there will always be times when employee interest and management interests don't align. There will always be times when those interests don't align. Let me give an example. So there was this company I consulted for. And they had to sack a staff, one of their staff. Unfortunately, in the real sense, when we analyze it clearly, the staff had to go, but it wasn't the staff's fault. The fault was the staff's supervisor. Do you understand? The staff supervisor was clearly at fault. Clearly, I mean, 100% at fault. 
However, the staff suffered the brunt. So what was the fault? The person does not know how to train people. She doesn't know how to teach people. She doesn't know how to mentor people. We brought in a total novice for you to supervise. A total novice was brought in for her to supervise, but she couldn't supervise the novice until it was, it was a bad situation. It was a very bad situation. She couldn't supervise. This, just before the staff was sacked, the issue was brought to me. The issue was brought to me just before the staff was sacked. And I was like, number one, based on the performance indices, the staff has to go. But because of the stories I have now heard that it's not documented every, anywhere, please take him out of here. Thank you. Sorry. So, because of that issue that was with the staff supervisor, the staff suffered the brunt. But there is no way that it is documented that the staff manager cannot train. She doesn't have the capacity to deliver the job. And the worst part of the whole story is that she's management a child, sort of. Let me use that word. So she's the CEO side chick. Do you understand? So the companies pay, pay for her accommodation, pay for a lot of bills for her and all of that. So she's the company's, she's management side chick. And that's... Now, there is no way you will find it in the company's handbook that where this, that, 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 that you won't find it anywhere. In the entire mentoring process of the new employee, there was no way that the manager was queried on anything or anything like that. Everything went to the employee. So in that kind of situation, it's not a win-win. The girl herself was the new employee. After I spoke with her, I discovered she was actually willing to go. They, they wanted to terminate her. I said, let her write her resignation and let her go. So I had to die, diffuse a lot of fire because the girl was angry. She has suffered. She came into the organization thinking she will learn, have opportunity to grow and do a lot of stuff. But she has seen that there is, there is nothing like that here. So all we had to do was just to diffuse the fire, quench it, let her go on her own. She was paid a good salary. She was paid off and she left. That's not a win-win situation. A win-win situation, or it's a win-win because I had to come in to diffuse the fire. A win-lose would have been that the girl would have gone to Berekete family and called the name of the organization and say, a guy is sleeping with my supervisor and make a mess of that situation and they will never recover from it. Now, what we're saying is that there are many times the organization has one thing they want to achieve. And staff have their own plan. And many times, those two plans don't align. Where those two plans don't align, it is our job to create climate, to create a situation where the girl will be happy to go. So she had left. She's happy. She was paid. She, no quarrel. She's fine. That's win-win. Everybody is happy. The company continues. Ogar continues with his side chick. The company continues to do their business. Bashaka, everybody is happy. That's a win-win. But it is our responsibility that that situation will not always happen. So if I didn't intervene, only God knows how bad it would have gone. So as HR managers, it's our job to create climate. You see this climate? Let me use another example. This is biology now. There are women that, by biology, they can never be pregnant. If they have, there's a factor, they have, there's a particular gene, if they have, that gene kills the child because the thing recognizes the, the child growing in their womb as a cancer, and so it kills it. 
by biology, they can never be pregnant. But science has not found in technology to weaken that thing so that the women can give birth. Win-win. Everybody is happy. The host is happy. The baby is alive. Win-win. Do you understand? Did I answer your question? Yes, so you did, sir. All right. Thank you. Okay, so let thank me try you, and see. Yeah. Let me try and see if I can round up in another 15, 20 minutes. Employee relationship. Basically, it's a formal relationship named by contract. So, for there to be an employment relationship, for you to say, I am the employee of so so, -so company, there must be a contract of employment. What it means is that a person must write paper and sign it and give it to you with terms and conditions in it. And you must agree to those terms and that conditions and you will agree by accepting the contract and sign it and it is filed. Now, there are a lot of private organizations in Nigeria that will hire a person and be paying salary by law, by Nigerian labor law. Three months is the deadline. If after three months they refuse to give you a file letter, you are a volunteer. You are just working and they are dashing you money. They can come and say you are not their staff because what is the evidence that you are their staff? There is no evidence. There is no letter. There is no contract. There is nothing. But the evidence that a contract has issued between organization and staff is the offer letter, the contract of employment. Now, if you look at the, this picture beside on this side here, okay. So this picture on this side talks about the employment relationship. First of all, there are parties, the managers or the owners of the company, the employees or the employees' representatives. That is where there is a union, right? On this side is the operations. Levels, process, style. We are this kind of organization. We do this, we do that, all those things. This is where you find it. Operations talks about your handbook. Details about your handbook is found in your operations. Then from this side, you come to substance. Substance talks about the details of that relationship. What is the job? Your job is engineering officer. What is the reward for performing the job? Is there a growth line? What is communication like? What is culture? Then collective is where we have unions. What are joint agreements? Oh, management and staff you don't have, have agreed to. No staff will be sacked during these merger and acquisitions. You know, there was a, that time when banks were acquiring and merging and acquiring and merging. There was this thing that went around and they said uh, the banks have committed that no staff, <laughs> no staff will be signed, sacked. And I asked, I asked a very, very delicate question. I said, Central Bank said so banks should not start, sack staff, right? So I asked, is Central Bank paying the staff salary? They said no. I think good. So if central bank is not paying your salary, a bank that is seated somewhere, funded by the government, funded by everything with government, they will now come and tell me not to sack staff. Is that possible? So what did the banks do? They will just you will just come to work Monday morning. Enter. Go and meet your ah, okay. You go and meet your head of operations, sir. I cannot log into my email. I cannot log into our, our bank app. Sure. Ah, okay, you can't log in. Please, you need to see the branch head. Branch head will say, go and meet regional head or regional HR. That's where they will tell you, sorry, your services are no longer required. Uh, we'll send you a letter. We'll send you details and all of that. Just sit down at home first. We'll tell you what is happening. We are, this restructuring is causing a lot of confusion for... They will just speak all the English and then at the end of the day, the person will sit down at home. That was how banks sacked over 6,000 staff. 
collectively during the last merger and acquisition they sacked over six thousand staff you just come in the morning lucky no, no way you know that you are good. when they start telling you go and meet this person go and meet that person ah it's in law just pack your load and go you will see credit alert later in the day in lieu of <laughs> and that's the end then the final part is the structure there's always a structure to that relationship we we'll get to our hope we can get to that so what is the employee employment contract there's a, it is a basis of the relationship it is the legality if i don't have an offer letter i can never claim that i work with union bank but because i have an offer letter i have promotion letters i have queries i have all those things i have a file where i can show you in my four years of working in Union Bank, this is it. This is my promotion. This is this. This is that. This is that. You can see a pattern. That is legality. So if they make noise, you know, I say, we don't know him. I say, sorry. Come and see. MB Yela was your HR manager. Except you want to deny him too. This is your letterhead. It wasn't cooked in Oluwole. This is this. We'll show you all the evidences. Then you come and uh, it. Burden of proof, it will not be on you to show that it is false, false or real. It makes the relationship legal. So if you are working for anybody today and the person doesn't have offer letter for you or for any other staff, or the thing you hold off first, don't give him offer, le offer letter yet. Raise alarm. Raise alarm. Or they say, ah, this person is, let them tell you, is it your staff or is it just family member? If it's your staff, issue a contract legality of the relationship for there to be marriage there must be a court signed affidavit that Onusola Aditiba married Onusola Aditiba or Sosa and Sudi this is the certificate that is why if you go to the embassy and you carry your traditional picture they will listen to you but when you bring that court certificate they say hey this is the one we know then there are duties expected in the employment contract. So what it means is that there are, there are expectations. There are expectations in that contract that if you do this, if you resume at 8 to 5 every day, you do this, do this, do this, do this, I will, on the, between the 25th and 28th, or on the last working day of every month, credit your account with so so and so sum of Naira, or dollars, or pounds, or whichever one it is. And then the third thing is acceptance and control. This is the part many of us HR don't like accepting. So if I pay you money for you to spend a time within my, my organization to work, I control that time because I have paid for it and you accepted the payments. So if there is no acceptance, there's no contract. And if there's no contract, you too, you can wake up after three months and just decide not to show up. Shola, where are you? I'm at home. Why are you not coming to work? I say, which work? Don't you know yourself? I say, no, I don't know. Ah, what's going on? What is, what's the meaning of this? Are you, are, you, are you trying to be insolent? Are you trying to... I say, no. I don't have any work with you, sir. What does that mean? There is no contract. There is no contract. If you choose to fire, if you choose not to pay my salary today, what will I use to hold the company down? What will I use to take you to court? If the company decides today not to pay your salary, what is your evidence that you are even their staff? You understand? So, and there are also terms for it. There are conditions of work. Oh, you are expected to... So if they start telling you, yeah, you are supposed to drive the car, eh, 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 eh. you told me that there will be a driver. Look at it, see my contract. You told me that I will have a driver, not that I'll be driving off his car. And then there are rights, and then there are privileges. A fair day's pay for a fair day's work. So let's move. What are the types? There's the formal contract contract that states details this is resumption this is office address this is what you will do this is the person you report to 
this is this is like that. Every detail is clearly stated. In fact, performance requirements are stated. You are expected to provide this, that, that, that. You have a target. You have this, you have that. All of that is stated there. The informal uh, contracts, however, yeah, we call them relational contracts. So uh, when did this person start working with us? Uh, they say it's August's younger brother, sister's uncle, and uh, son. August's younger brother, sister's uncle's son. And he has also resumed here too. Eh, HR, I'm not aware. If HR is not aware, but he's on the salary schedule now. Eh, hey, ah, they paid him last month. Now. Ah, okay. So how do you measure that the person is working? How do you? It's difficult. It is ambiguous. Sir, so what is this person's role in the office? Eh, uh, just give him officer. Officer to do what? Eh, uh, you just be the officer. So I used to tell CEOs, I have a class, I have for CEOs. I used to tell them, I said, don't complicate the life of your HR managers. Don't hire people that you now leave HR manager to be thinking, how do I, how do I manage this person? If you want to hire your brother, tell me, I want to hire your brother. I want to hire my brother. Or I want to hire uh, my family member. This is what the person will be doing. And that's all. Where I work currently, we have like two or three people like that, and they were hired for political reasons, strictly political reasons, because they are our in into the current government. We don't have any relationship, so we hired them for those reasons. Sometimes they come to work, sometimes they don't come. We don't care. Our own is help us enter this person so that we can meet this person to meet this person. And they are doing fantastically well. At least now the contract is even clear. Then the final one is psychological contract. You know what psychological contract is? That in my mind, mm, Shola should be able to do this. So you now can say, ah, Shola, why are you not doing it? Shola, why are you not driving? Uh, I, I can't drive. No, 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 no. I thought you drive that. Don't you have driver's license? Yes, I have driver's license. But, ah, so psychological contracts are implied. They are implied in it is that because you are HR, you are supposed to be able to do this. Because you are a driver, you are supposed to be able to do this. Because you are a chartered accountant, you are supposed to be able to do this. It is not clearly stated. It is implied. So what does the employment relationship do? set the tone and culture sorry it's supposed to be set the tone and culture in the organization from the point of interview and then it shows transparency now i always like to say this when i talk about the employment relationships especially at interviews i said i always encourage hr managers to be extra sensitive when you are mm -hmm. conducting interviews be extra sensitive because you see the interview table it's a table where people come to lie. People come and they, you see those CVs. I, I did, I, I've done, an, I've done like three interviews this morning. Between nine and 11, I've done about three interviews. And if you see, see fantastic CVs, CVs that will blow your mind. But ladies and gentlemen, nothing. Those people, uh, like we say, now wash. You ask question, Somebody that has spent eight years in business development and sales, and the person you are asking questions, and the person is just beating around the bush. So you need to be very careful in interviews. We talk about legal compliance. In all contracts, there's legal compliance that we expect that the company will comply with labor law in that in Nigeria. But we know that a lot of companies don't comply with labor laws in Nigeria. Yes or yes, we know. A lot of them don't. A lot of companies don't comply with labor law. Unfortunately, it is difficult to enforce a law you don't know. A lot of Nigerians are ignorant of the labor law. Then the third problem is that the labor law, I doubt if it has been updated in the last 25 years. 
I seriously doubt it. In the last, if it has been updated in the last 25 years, there may be some gazettes, there may be some policy changes and all those kind of things. But you have a comprehensive review of the Nigerian labor law. That I don't think exists. The second thing is communication. So if the management is doing something, it should be communicated. And staff too should be able to communicate with management. See, I view communication as blood in human body. So if I take this cup and I touch it, instantly I know it is cold. Why? Because my central nervous system is working and the blood has communicated straight to my spinal cord. I don't know whether it's brain or spinal cord again that this thing is cold. So I can hold it up because the weather is hot. I can hold it long in my hand. If it is hot, I will immediately drop it. Why did I drop it? My central nervous system has told me this is hot. You can't keep holding on to it. The same thing in our organizations. If it is cold, when everything is cool and calm, we'll hold on to that stuff. You want to keep that stuff. You want to retain that stuff. You want to pay him more. You want to keep motivating the staff. But when the staff is causing problems, what do you do? You kick it up, you kick them out. So we say encourage open and transparent communication. But this is my question. Is it possible to have open and transparent communication in an environment in the workplace? Just think about it for a minute. Is it possible that management will have open and transparent communication at all times with staff. Is it possible that staff will have open and transparent communication with management? I seriously doubt it. Everybody have interests they are protecting. Then we talk about conflict resolution. That the employment contract also helps us resolve conflict and tells us how should conflict be resolved. You report to this person. So if you report to this person, it is written in your offer letter that Olushana Aditiba reports to, to Kayode. So Kayode, whenever Olushana Aditiba has an issue, he will take it to Kayode. Kayode can take it to whoever he reports to. I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, Kayode is management. And if Kayode knows, management knows. So put it behind your mind. If you have team members, as far as they are concerned, if you know, it is assumed that management knows. Whatever decision you take, whatever decision team leads take in your organization, as far as they are concerned, management knows. And so the employer contract should create the way, how do we resolve conflict? How do we communicate? How do we raise issues? So if I, if I want to complain, let me give you an example. So last month, yeah, about last month, we settled a sexual, a, so what a sexual harassment. The guy had like three major cases against him. This guy resumed in the office as the chief COO, sort of. He's the, he was the COO for that company. And six weeks after, was it? No, no, it was what it was 10 weeks after, two and a half months after he was facing a, a disciplinary committee where I was part of. And the question is: what could have happened that in 10 weeks? He's facing disciplinary committee. What could have happened? It was messy. So he, there was this the sexual harassment part. The girl didn't know how to escalate it. So she was now very confused. She now asked somebody. I've heard, I've been hearing of this thing. They say, if you want to report something to management, it's called whistleblowing. That do we have it in this organization? And they say, yes, uh, there's a policy like this. So we knew that number one, there's a problem. People are not being taught to the policies. There's a policy called whistleblowing. Because now, this is an admin officer having to whistleblow on the COO of the organization. It was a messy deal. The man was bad. But there was also, there is a, it was obvious that it happened. By the time witnesses came forward to talk, ah, there were over over ten of them that were witnesses against on that issue. 
it was a messy situation. In fact, by the time the girl reported it and it was brought to my attention and I read, because there was a documentation of everything and I read the story, I read the man's response, I read the girl's part and everything. I was like, like, like this man sexually harassed this girl. And they were like, how do you know? How would you? I said, see, I'm a man. She's a girl. At least I know, I know both to an extent. And I, when you see some things where a person is lying, you will almost know. But also, when the truth also wants to show up, we'll know. So we now started asking, we now said, okay, let's ask the man some very serious questions. We started asking him. All of a sudden, so you ask, did you stand on water yesterday? You say no. Say so, so yesterday around this time, you were standing inside the river and you did this and you did that. The man say, uh, actually, it wasn't intentional. So what it means is that he was lying with the first question. Because you say he didn't stand in water, but he was standing inside the river. You understand? So employees need to know that there are mechanisms where they can be heard. So you can imagine. As in, when we took it, the final action on the guy, I was physically present and I could see the physical joy in the eyes of the admin officer. Because she didn't know what to do. How do you want to manage your COO sexually harassing you? How do you manage that situation? It was bad. But we have created a mechanism so that somebody like admin can sack a COO. The man was summarily dismissed. He now sent people to come and beg and everything. Then he was termin it was changed to a termination and all of that. So staff should know that when there is conflict, there is a way for it to be resolved. When there is sexual harassment, there's a way, and you know that sexual harassment is just one, it's not one way, it's both ways. Where you have females too, female bosses harassing the young boys, they must know. So employee engagement, we foster employee, we foster a culture that people are engaged. There is work because I always uh, labor law says that what the duty to provide work is the responsibility of the employer. Duty to provide work is the responsibility of the employer. It's your responsibility. And then when the work is provided, you must recognize and reward contribution. Very, very important. Performance management. All of these are just summaries also tied to that contract and the strategic. So what, how do we measure that this person has done his job? Because, you know, many times when we do, I ask somebody to do an, uh, an appraisal sheet for a nurse and she does, it was, when I saw it, I was like, how do you measure this? So the concept of performance management says that you should be able to set expectation and measure whatever is not measured. It's not done. If you can't measure it, then who, how can you prove that it was done? And then your organizational goal must tie with the individual goal. Remember that at the beginning I talked about it, that for employee relations to happen, there must be alignment between individual goals and organizational goals. Now, as I round up, training and development, what is the plan? Is it part of your contract? Is it part of your employee relations? That we provide opportunity for employee growth. It is documented. When they start demanding for growth and training, do you now fight against it? Do you fight against it? Those things should be documented in the employee relation, employee relation document, which is your employee contract. And then the training must be linked again. You are seeing it. We are coming back to organizational goals. See, if everything you are doing does not achieve the organizational goal, the work done is what? Zero. Employee well-being. Today, everybody is talking about work-life balance. Ah. This thing, don't stress me. It's affect, this work is affecting my mental health. Uh, this one, no one. I'll need to take some days off work because my mental health is being damaged. Is this, is that, is that? And each time I look at them, I'm like, hmm. 
Number one, the fact that you are in Nigeria, you already have mental health issues. It's God that is helping all of us. But we also ensure that what is your provision for employee well-being? Is your office the time that people will want to wake up and come to? They are excited about work. We are excited about working with people. Because, you know, there's something, maybe, maybe many of us have never thought it out, but you don't choose the people you work with. The best you can do is to partake in the interview session. The final choice, many times, maybe some of us don't even choose. We're not even there. They just bring somebody for you, take, work with this person. How do you work with somebody you don't know? Somebody that will be treasuring you. I need to round up and then change management. What is your provision for change when we're about to change things? So look at it. Nigeria has taught us a lot of lessons. In, the, in this year alone, we've changed the government. We've changed a lot of things. People's taste have changed because of what? Exchange rates. Dollars increased, oil has increased, all of these things have increased. What is the plan for management to address the situation? So it's not just having a plan, it's also communicating the plan. So when we have a plan one, we communicate the plan clearly, clearly. And then we involve employees, which now brings me back to my first question. To what extent do we involve employees? And my final thought here should be strategy. This should be my final thought, strategic planning. We are going to align employees with our strategies. For us to apply, align employee relations with strategies, with the overall organizational strategy that the strategy you are documenting to manage people for performance, for change, for compliance, for all those things I've mentioned, the strategies you draw up must align with what the organization wants to attain. Consider long-term workforce planning and how employee relations contribute to organizational success. Ladies and gentlemen, I will stop here and take your questions. Any questions? I've spoken a lot today. Any questions? Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Kyle, and um, I want to speak on behalf of young HR professionals like I, that are uh, HR officers and uh, HR journalists. They are not going to be bored, or not going to be bored, I think, but they're going to be bored. I'm not going to be worried about communicating ideas. Now, sometimes when the you know, HR manager, the boss, is not doesn't want to take whatever you say to the management. Now, it's not about that. that, 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 that where I say you can do to manage, you have done that try to test. But where I feel this thing has to be done. But this one is not just taking it. You should use this people to take up. And I'm like, okay, at least say that I allow them to get it. But they don't say that all. So I'm trying to go about it. Now, I don't have a supportive boss. boss. Okay, so if I understand your question well, you want to find out how do you get your boss to listen to you, take the advice and suggestions you bring, right? Is that your question? And then if yes. your boss is not taking if your boss is yes, not taking it, how do you escalate it to management, right? Uh, uh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I will try everyone to manage it. How do I actually get it? How do I how do I get it? Okay. So I'm just saying. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh I'll give you a few concepts. Uh, some I have learned the hard way. 
And the first one, I will use, I will start from the hard one and then I'll go to the easy one. The hard one, wait for your time. <laughs> is a hard thing that there is nothing you will say or do that will convince that person. He doesn't want to hear. He will tell you, when did you start? Kill kilo more. And I'll I'll say I'll tell you why. I had a branch manager that when I joined banking, my branch mm -hmm. manager joined banking the year I was born. I don't know if I've told you this story before. The year I was born, that was the year he started bank his banking career. I was born in December. He started his banking career in February. So there was there is nothing you want to see. The man has a comeback for you. Drop this idea, he will, he will give it back. Drop this idea, he will scatter it. Drop this idea, he will pieces it. So I learned there's just one way. I wait for my time. I bided time. But I made sure, which is the second point, I made sure I gave impeccable work. Impeccable work. It got so work, it got so good that if they want to do training in international and in foreign operations in Abuja, they will tell you, go and meet Shola. He's in Metama or it's a central area. Go and meet him there. He will teach you. You want to do training on MoneyGram or all those visa or all those things, go and meet Shola. You want to do how to manage uh, online your card booking, you have backlog of cards, this, that, 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 go and meet Shola. You want to do GL proof. I was the first person ever in Union Bank. Now, I don't know how true it is, but I was the first person, I was told that I was the first person to do GL proof under one week. GL proof, they do it then. When I joined in 2010, they would do, you are doing GL proof of this month, of November. And by December ending, you are just submitting November GL And it's December has ended. You are just submitting November's GL proof. I came, I did it in one week. My HOP couldn't be fixed in other eyes. It's possible. I said, I've done it. By the second time I did it, I did it in three days. By the third time I did it, I finished it in one hour. It's still the same thing. So you need to learn how to give impeccable work. Third answer, you need to show working. What did I say? Show working. It is called proof of concept. If you say this concept works, then show us that it works. Give us a proof of concept. Your international agencies will not fund your idea until you do a proof of concept. They want to see, if you say this thing works, show us how it has worked. On Wednesday or so, I was on a call with GIZ, with one of the organizations I partner with. And the woman was like, okay, you say you have this software. Show us. We want to see what you claim you have done. Show us. By the time we, we took them through the software, the woman was just smiling. But she has never seen anything like this. And I know that that one just bring big money to that organization. Do you understand? Show working, show proof of concept. Because trust me, people have their reasons, which is my fourth answer. People have their reasons. Sometimes the reasons you may never understand. You may never understand. One of the fights I used to have with my branch manager then is sleeping with excess cash. My branch in 2011, the branch limit was 4 million naira. What it means is that the maximum amount that should be found in your vault overnight in naira, all the denominations in the naira, 4 million naira. So if they open your vault at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. in the morning, when they count everything, it must not exceed 4 million naira, Inclu including damage notes. Everything four million. So there was this day I slept with six million. The man shouted, shouted, I apologized. Another day came, 
I slept with 13 million. What happened? A customer brought in, I, I slept 13.7 or so. A customer brought in 10 million naira and needed the money to be posted. He brought in the money at quarter to four. He said the money must be counted and posted immediately. Somebody's waiting for it. person in the bank. So he has to sit in the bank and wait for us to do it here so that they can cash the money on the other side. I had to do it. The man saw it, issued me query, shouted. So I was like, ah, I know insurance covers me. So what is all this shout about? The man said, next time they bring money like that, I should tell them that they, we should box it. And all he said, give me all these reasons and all of that. A few weeks later, there was a robbery in, there was another bank that is beside us was that we share fence, not, not fence, but there's just a building between the two of us. The bank was robbed. And we heard the bank limit was 5 million. But the night they were robbed, they were robbed of over 60 million. That was what they were robbed of. That's the 60 something million. By the time it got to police and everything, by the time I read that story in the newspaper, Guess how much I saw? I saw over 200 million. What was the branch limit? Five million. They were robbed of over 60 million. By the time it got to the police, it was over 200 million. Now, the burden of proof. The person will show, okay, from our books, this is the amount we had that night. Yes. And then the bank will now ask you, so why did you, what happened? Oh, a customer came, this, that, 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 that. And then when insurance finally came to pay, insurance refunded 5 million naira. And I was like, why will insurance return 5 million? Your books show that you had 60 million plus. Why, what of the others? They said, insurance covers for the amount of your limits. Anything above that, you are on your own. That was when I knew and I understood why the man was shouting that we should never sleep above our limits. After that, ah, once somebody comes like this, and we, once it's cut out to fall, you bring me money that will scatter my teeth. No, 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 no. I will beg you. Oga, okay, is it urgent? No. We'll post it first thing tomorrow morning. We'll count it, stamp it for you, sign it, give you a copy, box it. Well, we'll post it first thing tomorrow. But that's the first transaction we'll post. You understand? So um, there are things that your supervisor knows that you don't know. The girl that was fired based on probation, probation issues, poor performance during probation. Somebody else went to carry the fight. The admin officer wrote to HR, querying HR. Why should she sack the girl without informing her that the girl works somewhat with admin and she, the team lead, is not but as good team lead, as good team lead anyway? So I was like, what is your own? Why are you carrying fight for somebody that is not your business? So I like, know at least they should send a mail to everybody that this person is no longer there. I said then, why didn't you just walk up to the person and ask? Why do you have to send an email? So you need to understand that there are things that are happening in your department, in your organization that you, you will never hear of until you become team lead. You will never see it until you become manager. Until you get to a point in your career, you will never understand it. And so it is important that you listen. Whether we like it or not, organizational politics is real. We need to learn how to play it. And we need to learn how to keep ourselves safe. I'm saying this because we, we've gone to a place for me. I fought my branch manager for a whole year. And I didn't know that the man had started conniving my exit. It was a senior manager somewhere that came to my branch, came for money meeting and saw the mess we had 
and the woman started fighting. She went over my branch manager's head to the zonal coordinator and said, move Shola out of this branch now. I was in the office when my zonal coordinator called him and she sent me Shola. I want him to start resuming in my office. The man came to meet me, came to my table. Shola, it's an awesome man. Shola, what did you do for zonal coordinator? I said, do how? I've never seen her in a long way. Pack your load. Go and report in our office. I said, pack my load. Okay. Everybody thought I was fired. Even him thought I was fired. I didn't know. It was protection. When they moved me there, the woman now called me to our office and she sat me down. Started telling me, Inshallah, Mashallah, it's not every time your boss talks that you talk back. But first, I can't really do he told me all the things the man had planned. Good afternoon, because I'm not the only one not hearing him. I can't also hear him. Like I think his network, it's everybody, he's been freestyled or something. And I thought my network has started again. <laughs> I'm actually here um, because the last part I spoke about was literally what happened to me sometimes in August last year. I had a very big issue with my boss. My boss was like, they are so spontaneous that you are not And something, you know, something that happened to me last year that it was my boss that is going to state it. The same person that I almost designed for my job for. I I literally was the guy for, and that was that's what they said for the had network issue. It was just for me. I never knew because I was it was it was going to lead to that point. It was it actually happened, and I just got that the relationship was was restored. But who knows? It will probably be cancelled. A lot of other things. Behavior, behavior, behavior wise, in terms of my own behavior and them. Um, we we want to get along together. I went, I went, I went for an interview, and I honestly like this last part um Mr. Lushala is talking about because it's it's very, very practical. It's something that happens to most of us and what I just like or what I exactly picked is just wait, be patient, wait for your time. Exactly. Because there are things we don't exactly know. And most time we'll be querying with our supervisors, with our managers, and sometimes they're even protecting us, but we may not know. Just okay. so that they can't tell us everything and we end up getting angry. So All right. I think I like that Thank point. You. It was making. Thank you very much. Bring him back. Uh, this is the place we no, he said the class. He said the class is over. But let me say this from experience, especially if you are going to be an HR person, there are information you would have that you would not be able okay. to. No matter how much people press for, you will not be able to share because it, the nature of your role would not allow you to share. One number two. Until I became a manager, I used to look at my managers and like, you would just sit down at the table. 
me, I'll be running up and down, attending meetings, writing reports, and giving you a report until I became a manager. And I realized that people will call me and looking at their phone calls, and I'm not just in the mood to pick their phone calls. I am mentally sapped. I have lost energy to think about anything. I just wanted a break. So a phone call will not be what I want to get. So at that point, you begin to realize that the higher you go, the more you get exhausted, not physically, but psychologically. So the fact that you are seeing it from one perspective does not mean that your perspective is the perfect or is the best. It only means that, see, you only see it from your own angle. If you can only switch role with your manager. Now, in the workplace, it has been said that people don't, don't leave a job. When they resign, people leave a bad manager. There are people who have held on to their job longer than they would have, but because of their managers. And there are people who have left the jobs they should have held on to, but had to let go because of their managers. The question I would ask you is, what kind of manager would you like to be known as? Would you like to be known as the manager that watches over the interest of all stakeholders? Don't forget, he said, HR is not for the management. HR is not for the people. HR is for the organization. And in the organization, there are several stakeholders. And HR's role is to bring about a balance. And see, when people talk about a work, they toxic work environment. Toxicity is not a physical thing. It is perceptual and it's a feeling. And it's a feeling that this man does not want me. It's a feeling that this man does not respect me. It's a feeling that my opinion does not count. It's a feeling that whatever I do does not add any value to the organization. Those things put together are the things that we call toxicity. You just get into the workplace and you feel like you are being choked. And when you look at things, the physical environment, the ambience may look good, but it's a feeling of it's, it's perceptual, and that is one thing that deliberately a, a very good strategic employee relations practice. What it does is to ensure that those perceptual things, those negative perceptions, are reduced to the barest minimum. It doesn't mean that there won't be a semblance of them over time, but you need to reduce them to the barest minimum so that you can get the best out of everybody. We believe in industrial relations that. Conflict is inevitable. It happens in our homes. It happens in our extended families. It happens at the workplace. It happens in church. It happens in the community. It happens everywhere. Conflict is inevitable. What is conflict? Divergent opinion. Once you have an opinion that contradicts my own opinion or that, or that is different from my own opinion, conflict has began to ensue. Now, how you manage it is what will now determine if it become a, a, a destructive one or it's one that gives you the opportunity to learn. So in your workplace, you all, if you want to do HR, you must learn to grow to a point where you detach your emotions from your job. And that's the major problem most of us have. You must be able to separate you as Sami from you as the HR manager. Sami, there are things Sami will not take. HR manager, there are things you will swallow. Not because they are convenient for you as a person, but because they are convenient for the role you are performing. So you, we all need to pay attention to that. Those are the things that strengthens employee relations in any system. It is being emotionally intelligent. We talk about emotional intelligence. This is where it comes up. Because in conflict management, you will see managers come to you and say, sack that person. But it is not your duty not to just sack, but to search out, to investigate, to probe what is the reason. See, there can be allegations of sexual assault against a person, and they can give you what looks like evidence, but that accusation may be outrightly false. I am not telling you a fiction. I am telling you things I have seen by experience, from experience. People that have been held, that have been accused of involving or engaging in sexual assault, 
But by the time we began to probe, we realized that, man, there's nothing called an assault here. It's a setup. So that is where you need to learn to detach yourself from the thing so that you can maintain an objective mindset and be able to resolve issues. Rather, I'm sure we have been able to learn a lot from Mr. Shola Adetiba's session. And I hope that every one of us, in one way or the other, has taken something away from this class. So is there any question, any question, contribution, that anyone has any question then i'll just talk about something today is week 11 we have week 12 next week and we have take week 13 the upper week and it will be over with this cohort then we we'll begin to plan towards the next cohort so any question yes sir sorry someone is yes i have a question sir. please who is talking uh, we can barely hear you. That's what I'm asking. Okay. If I because we're sorry, am I okay? Okay, Vera, wait. Let me just try to go ahead. Okay, so my first one is you know, you said the SRA is not. Work in favor of the management and also uh, just a leading man between the employees. Uh, my question is sometimes you see a situation where HR will try to be on the path of the management or the CEO. Go ahead, so but I'm straining uh, seriously. Sorry, can you all hear her very well? You, no, no, it's, she's not clear. I think she'll remove her earpiece or something. She's using earpiece or maybe the because we need to hear what you are saying to be able to yes, respond. Maybe. Exactly. Maybe she should take away her ear. Can you hear me now? Better. Sorry. Better. Thank you. Hello. Can you hear me now? Remove the ear. Yes, ma'am. We hear you very clear. Please, please go ahead. We can hear you. Sir, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, you can hear me now. So my question is this, you know, the HR is a middleman between the, the employ, employer and the employee, you know. But most time we find out that, um, I don't know the reason, most time there are some policy and the HR will also, will also consider to some extent that he also is an employee or she also is an employee. So how will the HR now be able to manage also trying to protect his own interest in the organization so that it doesn't look as if he is overdoing for the employee or is overdoing for the management? So at what point will he be able to, to, to deliver his duty? Also being in fact that he also can be also laid off. Thank All you. Right. That's my question. It's a very simple thing. Number one, when, whatever you are fighting for, don't put yourself in the picture. I say that because when what you are fighting for seems to be favoring you more than every other person, management will blackmail you. Management okay. will say you are fighting for yourself. That's the first thing. So be careful. Deliberately everywhere I'd worked, I'd never made a case for my own salary review when I'm making a case for everybody. I make a case for myself independently so that when I am talking, I am talking to my MD that see, in this situation, I am talking for me and I'm asking that you review my own salary. But when I'm making an all-round salary review push, I don't make it a personalized thing. I make it a collective system thing and all i try to do is number one you need to understand what is happening in the economy you must understand macroeconomic um factors and indices and as you understand them you begin to look at how they impact one on the business and two on the employees one on the business because the business must have the capacity to pay or to to do what you want the business to do for example, you can't be telling me to pay one million naira per officer when you don't you know that I can't even do five hundred per manager. So if you are telling me to do that, then it doesn't make sense. So you must get your you must do your external survey. We talked about it last week, right? You must do your external yeah. survey, understand what happens in your industry. And what you are doing when you are talking to the manager, uh, to the management, is you are a consultant, HR. Now, there are 
you are consulting for the management. So what you are saying to the management is, look, we have done our study. These are the realities on ground. These are the implications for staff retention. These are the implications for delivery of quality. And because of this understanding, we're making recommendations that we should do A, B, C, D. Having taken into consideration the organization's capacity to sustainably fulfill this commitment, once you can present all those things. So it's not enough to just send a two, three, four, five line request to management. No. There are times that you need to be detailed in your explanation to the management about what you want to do. And in your communication, as you talk about those things, you bring out the implications for non for non-implementation or non-execution of certain things. That look, not doing this, these are the likely implications for it. What's, all you need to do is give management both the positives and the negatives. The final decision on the management. And you must get to a point where when you, when, when, you want, when you want to fire people, people will get to know that you are not being vindictive. People know that it is just your job. It is not because you hate anybody. To get there, the people must see you to be sincere in your dealings with them. One. Then number two, the management must be see, must have seen you to be sincere in your recommendations and not that you are just fighting for your pocket. And three, you should be able to maintain that objectivity at all times, even when it seems to put you at a disadvantage. Because I tell you the truth, you can always make a case for yourself. You can always. Well, I have always done. I can work on, I, I once upon a time, I walked into my MD's office and I said I wanted a salary review. I said, don't worry, I'll get back to you. Let me make my own side, right, findings. He went outside and he made his own findings and he came back and he said, go and fix your salary. And I said to him straight, I said, sir, it is wrong. It is wrong for me to fix my own salary. It's unethical. I said, rather, why don't you talk to the my deputy who should talk to my management uh, lead? Let them advise you. And that was the day the man began to trust me absolutely. Because he thought I would go and determine my own pay. And I could have. But I told him it is unethical. So if you are the one reviewing your own salary and writing letter to yourself for your salary review, it's unethical. Get someone else to write the letter and notify you of your salary increment or review and all those things. What it does is it gives credibility to the process. And it makes it look like you are professional and you don't get things mixed up. So the best way to make management understand what you are doing is put all the conditions on the table. Let management make the decision. You have, you have recommended, you have advised, but the final decision is with the man at the top. Let the man at the top make a decision. And when the decision is not what you had anticipated, don't take it personal. Keep advising. It gets to a point when they have done it two, three times and it backfired. They will learn to start trusting your judgment, knowing that the previous times you have advised them, and they took other decisions, it always backfires. So they will just trust you. They trust your sense of judgment. The problem with most HR professionals is our management don't trust our judgment. They don't believe we have the capacity to, to provide, the, to chart the course for organizational sustainability. And as an HR person, you are a finance consultant, whether you don't know. You are operations consultant. You are a consultant everywhere. So everybody must see you to be a value aggregator. You aggregate value across the system. And once you can aggregate value and deliver it to the organization, your boss will, treat, will, will, will respect you. See, the last place I worked that I left in August, and we have our issues that... They called me and they said, oh, we want to say to you, we want to pay you off. What do you want? And I said, make your recommendations. After that, the people that were brought in as HR consultants to come and take up from where I left, those ones took the work I did. They did some things. By the time they made recommendations to the MD CEO, the MD CEO that I just left called me back to say, look, what they have proposed to me, I do not believe is the best. Can you please help me review what they have submitted? And by the time he gave it to me, my recommendation by the time I reviewed, I said, look, if you do, if you go this route, you'll be going back like steps before I joined you. And eventually he, he told them straight, he said to the consulting people, he said, well, 
this is not what I am expecting. Look, we have gone past this level. And the reason is simple. I'm no longer with him. But he realized that although he has brought a, co a team of consultants, as a matter of fact, the consultant he brought, I am now a consultant to his own consultant. Because he realized that, okay, this person seems to know some things. And now they are giving me jobs. Thank you. Now they are giving me jobs for me to do and for us to do. So all you need to do is hand management trust. Hand management, I am this confidence that you are good at what you do. And management will always listen to you. I hope that answers your question, Vera. All right, any other question? Okay, fine. Uh, finally, I need to just 